So thank you. Okay, feel free to help out um, if um, the recording by any means uh, doesn't sit well with you. But if you would love to stay with us, you're welcome to enjoy this event. Okay. Um, right. We would love you to also please tell us where you're joining in from. Uh, kindly go to menti.com and type in the code. Priya, is this the right code? Grace, that is what I said. This is not the right code. The code has changed. We don't have the code right now. Okay. That's what I said, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so uh, please type on the chat window from where you have joined in because this yeah. code is not working. Apologies for this. Okay. Thank you very much, Priya. Please type in, in the chat. Tell us where you're joining in from. Like I said, I'm joining in from Nigeria. Cecilia. Where are you joining him from? Argentina. I'm from okay. Argentina, Buenos Aires, Argentina. <laughs> okay, that's, that's great. Uh, okay, please, we'd love you to let us know where you're joining in from as the event proceeds, right? So are we on to the next slide? Or? Okay. Okay, um, just to introduce the Women Power Up Network, uh, a bit about our community, Women Power Up Network uh, was inserted in, on January 26, 2020. We are not a business, but we are a community with a purpose, uh, and we have over 800 members across the globe. Our vision is to empower uh, with the right support, skill, and also to transform the future, right? where we are. We are providing this platform to help women and also men alike and everybody else, you know, enhance their leadership qualities, right? We truly believe that being good enough is amazing. We do not need to be an SME to power to, sorry, we do not need to be a business to power each other up. We, we do so at any given opportunity. And so we want you to join us to power ourselves together and change the world for the better. Right, so uh, on the screen is our mission and our vision and what uh, uh, it looks like. Um, we want to empower the right skills. We want to provide the platform to enhance leadership qualities. And we believe that being good enough is simply just amazing. Right, Cecilia, next slide. Thank you. Okay, this is a brief uh, on our partners, we have partners across the globe, and um, this is just a bit of them. Uh, before we move on, we'd like you to join us together as well to thank our partners for standing strong with us for over two years. Um, Agile in uh, Education, the USA Project Management Institute, Buenos Aires, Argentina, Project Management Institute, Slovenia, uh, our technology partner, uh, International Association of Projects, managers and as many also agnostic Ada became our partner uh less than a month ago and so uh and our, also our latest technology partner we are ready now llc thank you so much to you all for partnering with us and helping us really empower women from across the globe okay next slide thank you oh also the beautiful lady from bahamas uh, we'll be introducing our newest uh <laughs> member of the leads corner she's andrea pratt smith a we mentor lead from the bahamas uh i think we have a brief on uh andrea 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 we'll hand over the stage to you to introduce yourself and then talk a bit about uh the we mentor uh part of our uh, uh, women power Andrea. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Grace. It is indeed a pleasure to expand my role with the Women Power Up organization. And um, I am joining you from Nassau, Bahamas. I am a agile project manager, a professional Kanban trainer, a scrum master, and so on and so on. But foremost, I am a certified youth leader 
with the Bahamas government, with the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture. I've been in youth work for over 20 years. That's where I'm really passionate. And I'm trying to expand that passion into mentorship of not only youths, but also women and men who are looking to be project management professionals, agilists, and anything in this international arena where we have this platform. And so my goal with the being the We Mentor Lead is to actually implement initiatives and programs that can assist persons who need that additional push, that mentorship. Because we all know that whenever you can find a really good mentor that can see your vision for yourself, they can help you realize your dreams and your goals. And that's really what we want to do. So we're starting with just um, a quarterly we mentor focus conversation where we would have identified a subject matter expert who can actually come into our session for an hour, hour and a half and ask, you can ask all questions you want about your prof professional life, your personal life, whatever you feel as though you can benefit from having that particular subject matter expert on the stage in that time slot, um, slot to benefit you. So that's just one of the first initiatives that I have in mind, but I'm also thinking about us doing a lot of more focusing on individual mentoring. So if persons want to sign up with any of the subject matter experts that are part of We Mentor, we can avail ourselves once we have availability to try to encourage not only young women, because even though this organization says we power up and we are supporting women, this is a... a unisex group. We're not just for women. We also help men as well. So don't be discouraged by the women part of it. It's just that <laughs> women tend to be better leaders. <laughs> and I'm sure that our supporter, Lee Lambert, would agree with that. Women are being more aggressive in the workforce. We're taking charge in the homes. So, you know, the same way words of ways of working has shifted, the way that the leadership roles have shifted. Women are being forceful. We're making things happen. We're getting the things done. So join us in this movement of mentoring, leading, and excelling, and we're sure that you will be on benefit from what we have planned. Thank you, Grace. Oh, beautiful. As always, thank you so much, Priya. Uh, Andrea, thank you for all you've been doing and um, your work in the Bahamas. Uh, I've been seeing you and Lee on uh, LinkedIn uh, recently, and I know you guys are really taking Bahama, Bahamas by the storm, right? Thank you very much. Um, I also realized I did not introduce, um, allow um, Cecilia to introduce herself. So briefly, Cecilia, please kindly come. We would love to see your, beautiful, your pretty face and tell us where you're joining in from. She's, she's one of our leads, uh, uh, Latin America leads, right? Yeah, Cecilia. Thank you, Gray. Thank you. Yes, my name is Cecilia Boji. I am leading Latin America Women for Aware Arts Network. And it's a pleasure to have all you here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Cecilia. And um, our editor is actually down with the flu and so she wouldn't be joining today. Wish her well. She's been doing great for the Women Power Up Network. Okay, and we will be going over to the meet of today. Yes, while well, we're all gathered, we, uh, the, 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 the title, the theme for the event today is Thought Sketching, Visuals for Ideation, Capture, and Reflection with Jill Greenbaum. Yes, I love, love. Uh, I was going through her profile yesterday, and man, I uh, so, so really great opportunity getting to meet uh, women, great women doing wonderful things across the globe. And that's the opportunity that Women Power Up Network has afforded all of us. Okay, a bit about Jill. Uh, Jill uh, is a cultural intelligence evangelist and intercultural science communicator, cross-cultural content creator, uh, Dr. Catherine, sorry, okay, uh, I think something went wrong here. And so, uh, if you would like, please join me together to welcome Dr. Jill, she, is, she, is, she has any, I'll give her the chance to give us a brief on who she is. I think she'll better speak for herself and let's get um, get to know her from, from, from her point of view. So thank you very much, uh, Jill. Please uh, take the stage, thank you. Thank you, Happy. terrific. Yeah. And so good morning. 
or good afternoon or good evening. It is wonderful to be here with all of you. I am, so I am Jill Greenbaum. I am from New York. You can probably hear it in my voice. And I am delighted to be here with you and talking about thought sketching. But before we even get to that word, because we can tell that's two words put together and what does that even mean? Um, I'll give you just a little bit of background about me. I'm formerly a New York City public school teacher many, many years ago, teacher, principal, administrator. Um, I have a doctorate in education from Columbia University. And so I was in education for quite a while. I also ran two nonprofits in New Jersey that worked uh, with survivors of interpersonal violence. And so that is a, um, a cause near and dear to my heart, remains so today. And yet for the past 20 plus years, I have owned my own business in which I create training programs. So I'm an instructional designer, trainer, and evaluator, and that's how I came to drawing. So I'm gonna be asking you to think a little bit about how you come to be here today. What brought you here and what you hope to gain? Because when I was a trainer back in 1999, um, I recognized that the information, the training materials, I was a consultant for the American Management Association at that time, I still am over 20 years later, but I realized that the materials had a lot of text and they weren't engaging. And so I thought, well, this can change, this can be different. And there was some clip art, I, I won't deny that, but clip art is, is pretty uh, cartoon-like and not always taken seriously. I love it. I'm also a cartoonist, but the reality is I wanted to learn to draw myself so I could capture what people were saying in the training room and I could show them what they were saying and we could reflect upon it. So that began my journey over 20 years ago and it has been fun ever since. At this moment in time, we'll jump ahead. You probably don't need all the details about me, but I am the United States representative of the Bicablo Global Trainer Team. So Bicablo is a company based in Germany and they have developed a very uh, developmental systematic approach to drawing so that everyone can do it because we all write, right? Right? We all pick up a pencil or a pen and we're all making strokes. And it's really just putting those strokes together in new and different ways. And so that's what we're going to work with today. So behind me, and I'm hoping at this point that one of the folks involved will spotlight me so that everyone can see big what I'm doing because I'll be drawing along with you for a lot of the time. So here is the welcome. And that means we're just raising our arms together. We're getting together. We're going to be using markers. And I'm hoping that you have also been able to download and either have up on your screen or have printed out, doesn't matter. But here's just a little information about what to have on hand. So I'm hoping you read that already. If not, you just need some paper some A4 paper perhaps, or eight and a half by 11, depending on what part of the world you are in. And a black permanent marker would be great. And you might even have another color marker for shading, like a highlighter would be super. I've also enclosed, um, or in that particular file, essentially a template for our agenda for the day so that you can follow along and also make your notes. So this isn't where you're going to draw, it's too small, right? But this does tell you what we're up to. So as you can see, as we look at the agenda, um, right now we're in introductions and going over the agenda. We're going to do in a moment or two, a brief check-in. I want to find out how you're doing today. And then we'll get into what is this thing, visualization and thought sketching. We'll do some drawing. You're going to go into breakout groups. We'll do probably trios. So three people to a group randomly assigned and you'll have some drawing to do. And I know that it may be challenging to have your camera on at this point. Maybe there are things going on in the background. It's always lovely to talk with people. If that's possible, that's great. Certainly when you're in the breakout room, that would be important to make that connection with the other person that you are uh, other two people that you're connecting with. And I can see that there are things going on in the chat and I'm gonna leave that to the team to work with because I know that there's a copy of the file. It can probably be dropped right in the chat or there might be a link that it goes to, but I'm gonna encourage us since we are a relatively small group, if you have a question, please come off of mute because that will be easier than me consistently checking in with the chat, okay? 
So that is my first request. I'll tell you just a little bit more about Bicablo, which is located in Cologne, Germany, that has developed this method that we're going to use to do some drawing today. There are about 40 trainers in Germany itself. There are over two dozen of us around the world. And so, as I said, I'm the US rep, but I have to admit right before, or I have to tell you, because it was so much fun. I was in India uh, right before the pandemic. I left about a week before things shut down. And so I was in Delhi and also Bangalore and ran Bicablo trainings in both of those cities. And what a wonderful experience. I do hope to get there again. And while I would love to go to other parts of the world too, I do have colleagues in South America. So I'm not gonna uh, probably visit there to do work because they're doing work there already and they cover that area. Okay, so here's my question for you. I'm hoping you have paper and a marker at the ready. Here's the question. What is the best thing that's happened to you today? Please take the next three minutes. I'm gonna put on a timer and draw the best thing that's happened to you today. You will not have to show it or share it, but you could. All right, so I'll put on the timer. And I won't sing to you, that will be a blessing. All right. Just a simple drawing. There'll be no judgment involved. Whatever you draw will be fabulous because it's where you're starting from. I might even draw, make a quick drawing myself. If you have any questions, how to draw something, I am happy to answer, but I'm guessing you will find your way. You have, you're about halfway through your time. Fifteen seconds left. I'm hoping some people are going to be willing to come off. Well, come on camera would be a better way of putting it. Oop. 
hope, and there's my timer going off right now. So I'm wondering if anyone would care to share what they have created. Are there any takers? I can certainly share mine first. I'm just being the ultimate perfectionist. And I should say to myself, just like I say to other people, put down those tools of creativity. All right, so I just did super fast. So we'll just show you super fast. So this was me. And um, I have some art on my computer. So I was looking at um, a program that I'm working in right now. And I'm saying, oh, I love to make art. My paintbrushes, my giant coffee cup and my name. So just a little piece of what I was doing this morning, super simple and fast. And I'm wondering who would like to share. Yeah. Okay, I will share. It's not okay. so. Thank you, Cecilia. <laughs> there <I> go, Cecilia. <laughs> but can you see it? <laughs> yeah, maybe we can spotlight Cecilia for just a moment. Hold it up just a little. <laughs> Tell us about it, Cecilia. Yes. Yes. This is. The, I have my, the. Oh, I have a coffee. Uh, my husband brought me the coffee, and I have a beautiful landscape view from my window. And uh, that's all because it's early in the morning. <laughs> Gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> Andrea, Very it looked cool. like you were going to step in and offer up something. Yes. Um, well, I think the most fantastic thing that has happened to me today is the fact that I woke up. <laughs> okay. So I drew, I drew my bed. Beautiful. The fact that I got out of my bed today. Adorable. And then I'm looking forward to my day today with Lee Lambert because we're going exploring. So I said, fun times with Lee. Oh, awesome. Thank you. And would anyone else care to share? <laughs> Grace is laughing hard. I'm not sure she's going to share, but she's laughing. All right, I'll let you think about that for a minute, but what I would love, and I will look at the chat for this, but it's even better if you come off of mute, is I'd like you to reflect on what this was like. So it doesn't have to be a deep thought, although it could be, but what was it like to just all of a sudden be asked a question that you know the answer to, right? Because it's yours, and then be asked to turn it into a visual. What did that feel like? And all answers are acceptable here. So I did open up the chat, so I'm looking at it in case anyone is feeling like writing there as opposed to coming off of mute. Okay, I'd go mute. Um, <laughs> I was laughing really hard because I drew my son, but it's really funny. <laughs> I don't, it's not visible. <laughs> but Sometimes if you put the drawing right up next to your face, because your face is almost always fine with regard to the background, then we can okay. see it better. Oops, and it raises my hand. Nice, good job, Grace. And so would you speak to just for a moment what it felt like to do that? Okay, um, it was like a rush of emotions for me because uh -huh. um, he made me expend so much energy. That was my son, he's uh, four years old and super energetic, yeah. So it wasn't fun fun at the beginning, but looking back and probably towards the end, I was about going out and he gave me so much trouble. He didn't want me to go out and all of that. So I had to stay back, do a lot of things for him. And then even though I was almost frustrated cause I was, time time was running out of handball. Okay, and so Grace, I'm gonna interrupt you for a second and pardon me for doing that. I'm asking you to reflect on the drawing. Okay. Okay, okay, yeah, it's part of it. Uh, reflecting took me back to, the ending of the whole thing, you know, after the rush of emotions and everything, I think I gave him a hug and he was shooting for me, seriously. It was, it was like the best thing that happened for the day. Okay. Yeah. And so, so and so the question I'm putting out there to people, and perhaps someone else will also answer is not what you did or what happened, but what the drawing experience was like, what did it feel like? to draw and then to reflect on the drawing and perhaps share it with other people. Andrea's got a big smile on her face. Well, what it felt like to draw, it reminded me that I'm not an artist. <laughs> oh, so untrue. So I'm gonna argue with every single one of you that might say that we are all artists. 
we show our art in different ways. And it may not be that you feel proficient at drawing yet, right? But, um, but stepping, into, stepping into something new and different. Thank well, you. I, I just felt like my drawing should have progressed beyond the stick figures people. Right, and you know what, um, and I'm not sure because I didn't read what part of the world you are zooming in from, but at least in the US, most people that graduate high school are still drawing stick figures unless they had an interest in art and took classes because we don't progress much past eight years of age in our drawing skills because, um, because it's not valued in the same way that hard sciences are or other humanities. And so that is really common. So I, I want to just put that out there. And I can tell you, I just ran a training, a Bicablo training last week. And one fellow came in and he said, I have two left hands. And I said, that's okay. We work with people with two left hands, two right hands, a right and a left hand. It's all good. And he started with stick figures. And at the end of one day, eight hours, he had a chart that was laid out that used all the elements that we had talked about. And he was drawing completely differently. So you, by the end of our time together, will also be drawing a bit differently and you'll be on the road. Thanks for sharing that, Andrea. I know it can be hard to, to speak up sometimes about this, right? That we have you know, some hesitation around. Thank you, Ankita, for talking about gratitude, the feeling while drawing uh, and arrow. And I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, you are welcome to correct me. It reflects my imagination to foresee. Wow. Absolutely. And so that's the visualization piece. And it's tying that ability to use our imagination with our skills in drawing. And I can tell you, I draw every single day. And are all my drawings great? Absolutely not. All right. You have to, there's actually this man and he does wonderful stuff. Don't look him up right now. He's called the sneaky artist. His name is Nishan Jane, Nishant Jain. Um, he is originally from India. He lives here in the U.S. now. And what he'll say is, we're going to make a lot of bad drawings today until you get yeah. to some good ones. And I think just freeing up ourselves to experiment and learn along the way is what matters the most. I'm looking at my door right now in the room I'm in because I always talk about leaving your inner critic at the door because it does not serve you. What serves you is an open attitude towards, wow, that wasn't exactly as I intended. What can I do differently next time? Or gosh, I really love that about what I did. How can I repeat that? And so that's how I come to this work. Um, and so thank you all for sharing by coming off of you, by writing in the chat. And of course, if you have any questions along the way, I'm the gal that wants to answer them right when you have the question and not wait until the end, all right? Perfect. All right, so we've done a bit of our introductions at this point. Uh, I haven't learned a whole lot about so many of you yet because you haven't shared your drawings, but that's okay, all right? You get to keep that close to the vest if you choose to do so. What we're gonna move into now is talking a little bit about visualization, like what is that? And because, you know, just because you say a word doesn't mean that it's understood. So visualization is really taking that ability to think, to imagine, to project, to foresee, and um, integrating it with our ability to draw, just simply to draw. And so we're going to get to some of that in just a moment, but I want to give you just a little scientific background so this feels a little bit like, oh yeah, this isn't just we're taking out our pencils and playing, nothing wrong with that. But if you're using this for work, people might be a little skeptical at the beginning. And you might need to say, hey, you know, there, there's theory around this, there's practice around this. And so I'm going to share with you what's called the dual coding theory of memory. And I can put the professor's name in the chat later on uh, while you're doing some other work, doing some drawing. But this particular theory was developed by Alan Pavio from the University of Western Toronto. And it explains how our use of mnemonic devices, so that means things that help us remember other things, is affected by imagery. So let's think for a minute. If I say the word dog to you, I'm guessing that most of you imagine a breed that you like or know or love, a pet of your own. You probably don't think 
of the letters D-O-G or whatever it is in your home language. And so we know that if you actually combine those things like we do in children's books, right? The word and the picture, it's going to be dual coded because it's using two channels of our brain, both the left and the right side of our brain at the same time. And that's going to be what makes it such a strong experience. So our minds work with two different ways of representing what we're thinking about or what we're seeing. So the verbal representations, the word dog, and the mental images, the pictures that we conjure up in our head. And so when we can use these in combination, it makes it easier for us to understand, to store in our memories, and to recall. And those are the key pieces of this experience. And so we're going to work with that now. I am going to take down my welcome sign. I'm going to put up a fresh piece of paper, and we're going to start to do some drawing. Um, while I'm doing that, if you have a question and you want to come off of mute, by all means do, or I can peek at the check uh, in the chat as I am putting up the new paper, because I want to be sure that we're, we are clear on the basis for this kind of work. So I'm gonna have a nice big juicy piece of paper and you're going to have probably an A4 or an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And I'm gonna suggest that you write the word thought sketching up at the top of the paper, not too close to the top because we're gonna to wanna to put a container around it, meaning a shape around it. So it looks like a title, but nice big letters, like big capital letters that take up maybe 20% of your entire page, right? So big, we're telling people what we're doing. All right, and so I'm going to use a nice big marker and write thought sketching. Is there a tool I can use to ideate or visualize innovative ideas? You mean, Arrow, you mean besides your brain? And, and I say that in all seriousness, um, because that that's really it. I mean, you can certainly use computer programs, but we know, or applications. I'm thinking you might be asking a slightly different question. And so I'm gonna ask you if I'm on the right track and if not, tell me. And that is if I have an idea and I don't know how to represent it, is there something that can help me to do that? And so let me know if that's right or not. It might be easier if you can come off of mute just so we can have a conversation as opposed to back and forth in the chat. So I'm gonna write thought sketching up here and then we're gonna get down to business. Okay, so thought sketching is on the board and we're gonna start by just making some simple lines. So hard to believe, but true, but drawing a straight line can be kind of challenging. Have you ever had that experience? Where you're like, oh, I'm trying to make a straight line here and it's hard. And so what I wanna do is teach you a trick. So I'm gonna ask you to make a straight line across your page and you're gonna look where you're going, not where you are. Because often when we're drawing a line, we look right at the point of where's our tip now and we move it across the page. Look where you're going. And that's going to give you quite a straight line. So try that. And what you're looking for also is your marker um, consist consistently flat on the page, meaning you've got a nice solid line. All right, so let's make some shapes that you know very well, but we're gonna do them very thoughtfully um, and with consistency. Excellent, Andrea, glad to hear it. All right, so I'm gonna make a square and I'm gonna use my marker and I'm going to, if you have a chisel tip, 
different from a round tip. If you have a chisel tip, you got to rotate or turn the marker each time to have the same thickness for all four sides of your square. So we're going to make a square and then we're going to turn it into something. So there's my square. Please draw a square also. And try and go bigger than you're accustomed to. I know it's going to feel a little wonky, a little out of control, but we're just here playing. All right, so we're going to make this into a gift because I'm hoping that this session is going to end up feeling like a gift for you. And I'm just going to put a bow on it. So here's my ribbon. And there's my gift. And so, as I said, I'm not sure if I am spotlighted or not. I'm hoping I am just to make sure that it's easy for folks. You Fantastic. are. You Thanks, are. Grace. I appreciate yeah. it. I prefer to see gallery so, view so I can see everyone, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> All right, so we have made a square. All right, let's try making a circle and easier said than done. And you're gonna have to find your own way. I'll tell you what I do, but part of this work is also deciding what works best for you. And so um, I start at 12 o'clock if we're imagining a clock face. and I go counterclockwise, all right? And so you decide, do I wanna start at 12? Do I wanna start someplace else? Do I go clockwise or counterclockwise? So here we have a circle and I'm just feeling uh, very light and airy today. So we're gonna make this into with a simple S shape, right? You can make that shape. You make something like it all the time when you're making an S. And I'm gonna pop a little triangle here we have a balloon. So you're gonna have the capacity once you're, we're done here to look at things in new and different ways and to literally break them down so that you can draw them yourself. All right, and since uh, we're, all, we're all business people, let's make a stack of money. We're gonna take this same shape and lay it on its side. And then we'll make one underneath it and we'll connect them. And I'm just going to put a dollar sign right here. Of course, you'll put the sign that is appropriate for you. And then because who doesn't like thinking of a stack of money? Let's make a stack. All right. And you'll notice a couple of things. So I'm just going to point this out and I'll put a little note. That in Bicablo, when we want to show perspective or a stack of something, we do a slight angle to show as if it's a stack. And I'm going to do the same thing just because I think it'll reinforce the idea because I'm betting that you work with documents all the time. So let's make a document. So we're going to make a page here, but it's going to have a corner turned down. Um, I, I would call that a dog-eared corner, right? And so our, do our dog-eared corner document starts with a big L shape. And then we go across maybe three quarters of the way and make another L. And you can see the thickness of my lines is consistent because I keep rotating my wrist, okay? And then we have this corner here and I'm just gonna close it off. And now it looks like we have a piece of paper with the corner turned down. And if we want to make that a stack of papers, We're going to once again make extra lines at an angle to show perspective. So there's our stack. So I want to pause there because I could just I could just draw all day, but I want to ask what kinds of questions you have, and then I'll also respond to what Arrow has uh, written. Who has any questions about what we've drawn so far? All right, well then let me just respond to Arrow and then we're gonna draw a bit more and then you're gonna um, have an exercise to do together. 
So Arrow, when you talk about someone having a vision for a tech idea and wanting to visualize it for the team to understand the concept around it, what you need to do, and there are a couple of things you can do, and having an actual idea would be helpful, like if you could name one for us, because then we could work on it together. Um, but what you're going to do is think about, is this a new idea? Oh, perfect. That was the next thing I was going to teach you. Let's make a light bulb, right? Let's say you're, you're ideating or you're generating ideas um, for a team. You might say, okay, our session today, our agenda is going to be about ideation. Um, and maybe it's going to be about more than that. But if we're just talking ideas, here is how to make a light bulb consistently every time. And I'm going to share a resource with you also. So. It, well, let me share the resource first. So this is a Bacablo book. There are a number of them, but it's called Uzmo, U-Z-M-O, Thinking with Your Pen. It's well used. It's, it's a little, little stained there. Um, but these four letters, U-Z-M-O, are used to make a light bulb. And you make those letters all the time. All right, so let's start. We're going to do it in the order, U-Z-M-O. So here's a U. And I'm hoping you're doing this too, because it's when it's all done, it's like magic. How did that come together? All right. So doing this real time with me is great. Here's a U. Here's the Z, as if it's the ridges in the bottom of the light bulb. Here's the filament. And then here's the glass. All right. And so that was just UZMO put together. What you'll notice is that this is all about proportion to have it look right. Because if you made the bottom of the light bulb much bigger, it might look more like an ice cream cone or a mushroom, right? Or you made the top much bigger than the bottom. It's gonna look like it's falling over and it's not quite a light bulb. So this might be a quarter and this might be three quarters. So we have to think about, we're thinking about a lot of things when we're doing this drawing, just like when we write letters, size, sequence, and proportion. How big is what we're drawing? In what order are we drawing it? And what is the proportion of one area to another? All right, and so Arrow, to, to your question, I would be thinking, what are the concepts that need to be represented to the group and what might represent that from a visual standpoint? And so I would say that there is something called the noun project, which you might be familiar with, where you can go and search for words and then pictures will come up associated with that. Some of them are literal, and some of them are figurative, right? So this is literally a light bulb, but figuratively, it might be idea, innovation, you know, literally it would be light if it were on, you know, if you colored it in yellow. So it's, um, it's important also to develop a, vocab a visual vocabulary with your team that everyone understands, All right? So that's a part of the process also. So I'm hoping that that's helpful. All right, I'm taking a pause here. It's a New York pause. That means it's very short. But I'm wondering what questions are coming up for people in addition to what we've talked about so far. I'm also curious if um, Ara would love to engage more. Ara? Um, yeah. Hello, I'm can you hear me? You can go on, Arrow. Thank you. I think she's she has already addressed what I want. Cool. Ways is that um, my team needs to understand the visual vocabulary, uh -huh. and that means that okay, behind the thought, we have to create create it together. What we are to. Yes, and, and try to align them together. Absolutely. So I awesome. All right, so here's a building. If you wanted to represent where you all are working, that's one way of, of creating a building. Let's create a few graphic elements because these are always good things. Most of us are illustrating a process from time to time. And so here's a, here's a foolproof arrow, one you can make uh, easily. 
I believe, and repeat for good success. Two parallel lines. Remember, always looking where you're going, not where you are. So that's step one. And we put two little tabs on the arrow. We imagine where the center is, and you might even put a dot if it makes it easier to draw to that dot. And that is the tip of your arrow. You're gonna get a great arrow every time. And so you might even have text in there, like this way or our way or one way. You would always write your words first, and then you would put the arrow around it. I'm guessing that also we are often concerned about time. So we might make a stopwatch. To me, an alarm clock is probably more realistic, like, wake up, we got this time. Right? So I'm starting with a circle and I'm making some lines at the top. So this is an old fashioned arm cl alarm clock. Looks almost like Mickey Mouse to me, right? But there you go. And then you just put some hands on it. And it might just be like this, or you might put some, uh, some cute little legs on it, right? It's sitting somewhere. So these are things you can do. Let's make a couple figures and then we'll get into our activity. So the way we make figures in Bicablo is by making, I, I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna teach you Jill's method, um, which is making a giant U for the body. And then this is also where we think size, sequence, and proportion. When I make this giant U, halfway through, the top part is the torso. The bottom part are the legs. So we want to be sure our legs come up far enough so it doesn't look like pants are falling down, just to, just to be frank about this. Okay. And then we're going to put our head here in an oval shape. Right? Because unless we're Charlie Brown, talking about comics right now, unless we're Charlie Brown, we don't have big round heads, right? They're more like egg-shaped or oval-shaped. And in Bacablo, we also, we don't put in the neck. So the head rests above the torso. And this might be one unit. This is two, and this is two, approximately. Because if you make the head bigger, then they look like they're gonna fall over. It doesn't look like a person. And if you make um, the body too much bigger and a tiny head, then it also looks odd <laughs> and different. And people are like, what's that? So instead of getting your point across, they're concentrating on what doesn't look right here. Right? So that's something to think about. So I wanna pause for a moment. Oh, no, well, let's put some arms on too. Oh, this is one of my favorite ones. So our arms are really long. I'm not gonna ask you to stand up right now, although some of you might be standing like me, but when you stand up, your arms go down to like the middle of your thigh. They're surprisingly long. So you wanna be sure you make arms that are long enough. So that's why I have a, an arm out here to the side. And then here's, this is my wondering pose. That arm's a little long, I'll, I'll grant you that. But it's my look like this, like, hmm, what do I think about that, right? So you can just start to take these elements of the upside down U, making sure the proportion is about right, right? Torso, legs, and head, and then add arms. Uh, another favorite, we'll just do another quick one because these can be, you know, they take a little getting used to. Please, I'm hoping you left the inner critic at the door, right? But, so here's another U. This time I'm gonna imagine where the halfway point is, putting my head here. Little skinny, but it's okay, you get the idea. And then I love, once again, I love this look, but I'm also gonna do one like this, like no more work, <laughs> I'm done, right? So you can be expressive. Uh, and you saw on the welcome poster that I had all the arms up like this. And so one of the things you'll notice, I'll just point it out and then we'll move on, is that our arms always come from the top of the torso, right? They don't come from here because then you're gonna look like a bird or an angel, not bad looking like an angel, but that's not what we're going for, right? So the arms are always here.
Okie doke. So I'm gonna pause there for a moment and ask what questions you have. And it could be about a figure, it could be about a concept, maybe an idea that you wanna represent that you're like, Jill, I'm kind of stumped. I'd really love an answer to this. I'm happy to help. How do you represent a person sitting on a chair? Sitting on a chair, okay. So um, there are a couple ways to do it. So here's our torso. So we're gonna do, we'll do one or two more drawings. So here's the torso, right? And I tend to, I was just drawing this the other night because I'm, I'm drawing, um, making drawings for a book. And so I tend to put the legs like this, right? And what I might do is just put a little nose on and it shows the person's looking that way. So there, there are, of course, different ways of doing this. And I, I didn't bring my stack over. I can always do that um, towards the end of our time together. But there are all kinds of Bicablo books out there um, that can be, uh, I'm just going to put it right in the chat, that can be purchased on Neuland.com. That is a, another German company. Uh, but I will say also there is a Bicablo app that is free that will give you access to a number of icons that you can now take some of the skills, or you can take all the skills that we're talking about and begin to figure out how do I do this drawing? I will say there is a world of difference between being in a training and, and looking at a book, and yet it's a great place to start. And that's where most people begin. Um, and we can talk about that more later on if you like. All right, if I wanna tell a story with each of these illustrations, how do I combine them? So I, I'm gonna, as you can probably tell, being the true teacher, because I don't believe teachers give answers, I believe teachers ask good questions to get learners to think and refer them to resources. The question is, how would you tell a story? How do you tell a story when you're telling one verbally? Where do you begin? What's the beginning, the middle, and the end? And you know the purpose in mind. So the question is, how do you put the illustrations together to do so? And that's what, that's what we do in the Bicablo trainings. Um, but we could do one of those right now, right before you go into a group, because you're going to do some thought sketching together in trios. And so what I'd like to do is ask someone to give us a sentence that you would like represented. And I'm going to give you an example right now, just so you know what I'm talking about. So here's one that we came up with in a previous session. And the, the question that was being asked was, have you, have you completed your plan? So how would you make that into a visual? And so here I have a figure drawn really quickly and the figure has a question, you know, and that's a thought bubble, right? So that's U shapes making a circle, all right? The question is, have you completed your plan? And this is a person who's thinking, oh my gosh, <laughs> right? There's a little calendar up there, right there. The word says, whoa, here's the documents. And the person's going, well, right, so that's, that's a way with words. So that it's somewhat effective because you've integrated some visuals, but another way of saying the same thing might be this. So here's the person with the question. The check mark is, is the work done yet? And this person's going, oh my gosh, no. Right, so part of this is having the context, right? Does the person know what you're going to be talking about? Because we're having a conversation now, so you totally get this story. But if you had to see something out of the blue, right? Just, I have no idea what's gonna be presented to me. You would need something that had some words. So visualization is a combination of text and illustrations or drawings that come together to make it an even richer experience for seeing, understanding, um, remembering, and recalling. So does someone have a sentence that they'd like us all to work on? This feels sort of like um, like a game show, like let's stump the speaker. <laughs> What's a statement or something that you would like to represent? When will it be done? Okay, and so, so Andrew, do you see that as significantly different than what we were just talking about? Or how might you present it? 
that feels different as I look for my marker here. There we go. It's not much different from what you already said, Jill, but okay. I woke up with I woke up with that question on my mind. <laughs> sure. Well, okay. So I'm gonna do some drawing for mm -hmm. I'm just gonna set the timer for like a minute and a half, and I'm gonna ask you to do the same. And then I'll show you my drawing because it'll be up here behind me. And if you want to show us your drawing, that'll be fine too. So just a minute and a half, it's super quick, no judgments. We're just doing our best with when will it be done, all right? Cool, I'm setting the timer. Work on your paper, I'll work on mine. That's our timer. Okay, so I will be completely transparent as I always am. I ran into a bit of a spacing problem here. I don't have a lot of room on my paper. So the question that I was asking, which was when in a thought bubble became part of the person's head. Not a terrible thing, you get the idea, right? Um, ah. So that was the second one I did. So the question was when, and it's on this person's mind, and this person's going, hmm, as in, I don't know. And here, I didn't even have a second person. And you'll notice these two are just torsos. You don't have to do the legs. People are gonna get a head and a torso is a human being, right? But here, this is just, and I ran into the alarm clock here, space issues. But the question is, done? And that's the question. Who would care to show what they created? <laughs> no takers. That's okay. Ah, thank you, Grace, for being brave. Maybe someone can spotlight you. Yeah, it's got to be like right next to your face, I think, like over to the side. So you're on the same plane. Yeah, terrific. And are you using a marker or a pencil? Just because I'm having a little trouble seeing it. Pencil? Pencil. Pencil. Yeah, well, and so, mm -hmm. terrific. I made this one. Oh, beautiful. Well, I can, pull pull I can it back closer it. to your face. There we go. So oh. Awesome. Let me see. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> And so no. what you can find is that even in a short period of time with some very simple shapes, Andrea's going to show us hers also. <laughs> no idea. <Okay>. Nice. <laughs> oh, good. Sweet. Good, good job, Cecilia. <laughs> Excellent. Andrea, I love that. And it also makes me think, and this is just off the top of my head, because I always get ideas when I look at other people's stuff, which means you're stimulating me, not that I came up with it on my own, is that no idea might be no over a light bulb, right? Or a light bulb with a giant X over it or something like that, because we're going to get that. Okay, excellent. All right, and Arrow, as you say, where can we buy the grocery? Yeah, um, for me, I'd want to know what what the groceries were because that's going to be hard to represent otherwise, you know, whether it's fruit or 
or some other kinds of things. So part of it is also being very specific in what you're mm -hmm. saying. All right, mm -hmm. enough of this talk. It is time for you all to get down to some work. And so I'm going to rely on the team to prepare breakout groups that have three people. And it may be that the hosting team stays here and you will be your own team and that's fine too. doesn't matter to me. But I'm gonna put up the instructions now, which as you can imagine would be another way in which you can use visuals. All right, so we're gonna go from top to bottom and I will show you this. So what you're gonna do is come together in groups of three. You will use whatever sentence you created before. So it could be, when will it be done? Where can we buy the apples, cleaning fluid, punch, papers and, and uh, paper cups and napkins, right? For where, where can we buy the grocery? But whatever sentence you came up with, or you can come up with another one, you know, what's the deadline? Who's on the team? Um, are we meeting our budget? Those are all examples of sentences that could be used. So use your sentence that you were just working on. In your trio, the first person reads the sentence and you might wanna show it to other people just to make sure there's clear understanding, right? So you're going to read the sentence and then everyone visualizes the sentence. That means you're gonna draw what you believe the sentence is about. And just take two minutes for that. So having a timer would be really good if someone has, um, their phone nearby or can do it on their computer. All right, once you've done that, right? So here you are with your drawings. You will then show the results, share the results by holding it up to the screen. That's why coming on screen is really important. And you might have a conversation about which, is, which do we think best suits what we created? Like what the sentence was about, which one is the most clear? and then start over with the next sentence. So it means that everyone's sentence will be used. Everyone will draw each of the sentences. And so you're all, um, you're all doing all the work, right? So you all have a sentence, you're all drawing the same sentence at the same time together, and then you rotate partners. And so you'll be in trios. It should take approximately 15 minutes for you to do that. So once you're in your breakout room, if it's possible to show a timer, if not, we can send a message through about halfway just to be sure you don't get caught up in talking and not drawing. And so is that possible to put folks into breakout rooms to do that work? Terrific. Yes. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So I'm creating four break breakout rooms. Terrific. Yeah. Automatically assigned. I don't know how to. Uh, I don't. I don't know how to put yourself out of the breakout room. I don't know. You just don't okay. accept. You just don't accept to go into the breakout room, and you'll end up in the main room. Okay, okay. So so I, I will hang in the main room. I haven't assigned time to the to the broadcast. No worries. Mm -hmm. And Cecilia, will you stay here with me or will you go into a room? It I, will, I will go to the room. Room four is only two people. I will go there. Okay, great. And you're still going to be able to close the rooms at the appropriate time? I think so. Okay. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> okay. Thank yes, you. I think I, I, I have some people not in, in the room. Who will I find? Mm -hmm. OK. 
Doing. Marissa, if you're here, let me know. I'm happy to chat with you. If you want to draw, we can draw. I move my papers around. Okay, doke. So let's make a, a padlet for people. Okay, and I understand completely, Marissa. Thanks for letting me know. All right, so let me find tablet. There we go. So let's. There are a few things.
All right, so let's see how this is going. This is not. Okay. We came back early. You I, did. I'm did you get a chance to draw? Yes, I'm waiting for my other room. Okay. My fellow teammates, um, I think one had a really busy ideation. So I would love him to show what he did. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Good. Sandra is back. Okay. Great. We have about four minutes left before okay. folks come back, a little over four minutes. Okay.
Uh, some folks are coming back, even though there's a, there's a bit of time, but that's okay. We can chat while we're here. So what was fun? What was challenging? What questions do you have? While we wait for others to come back, those are good questions to ask everybody. And I'm just gonna do a little filling in here of my chart. What are your thoughts? Fun, interesting, challenging. How was it? <laughs> Now I, I haven't I haven't taken the, 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 the timer, so I don't know if I have to close all the rooms. Are Folks okay? have two minutes left. Okay, we have more two minutes. Okay. <laughs> but you can certainly you can certainly close the rooms because it will give them another minute to come back and then we can chat. For yes, them. perfect, perfect. I will close. Thank the you, room. Cecilia. Thank you. It was a very, a very, a very nice exercise. <laughs> I'm so glad. I can't wait to hear what people thought. <laughs> oh, it's so nice they to see coming. faces. They are coming back. Beautiful. All right, folks are coming back. I'm filling in just some of the drawings because we use a particular shading technique in Vocablo. All right, so my question for everyone is, what was that like? What was fun? What was challenging? What questions were stirred up in you? First was like how to draw. Uh -huh. And I think the first word, what would be the idea and how to draw it? Then, like you said, we all have two left uh, hands two here. <laughs> <laughs> So how to draw that? But finally, we came up with something uh, with, with the brainstorming. Terrific. Do you want Excellent. to see? Yes, of course. <laughs> so we have tried to depict an office scenario where uh, this, let's say I am getting late and this is the office. Right. And it's raining, some lightning and raindrops. And there are colleagues in office angry. And this is puzzle. Where is this person? So... The lack of space on this, just it's here and there, but this is the idea. Terrific. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing and for showing us all those great ideas that you put together to create a story and knowing that if you had more space, it could follow a sequence and people would yes. follow along with you. Yes, yes. It could well, have followed that. this. Yeah. But there's my daughter drawing. So she has drawn something <laughs> here. <laughs> she came in between. Awesome. Uh, so I didn't Thank have space. You. But uh, yeah, we brainstormed with uh, Cecilia and Yogesh and we got some ideas, good ideas, and I happened to draw it. Super. Well done. Who else would care to share? Yeah. <laughs> Terrific. Go for it, Andrea, and then maybe Manoj. No, but we, we were on the same team. Yeah. So Manoj came up with the with the idea of just do it. Uh huh. So Great. we didn't have a question; we had a statement. Great. And I just do it is 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 basically about someone who we're trying to mentor who has a goal. Uh huh. But they just don't have that encouragement to just do it. So we're advising them to come up with a plan. So we have a little sketch plan. We have some timelines and we're talking about budgets and we're going to help them and mentor them and let them know that if you have this goal and you set a plan, the next thing you have to do is take action. Uh -huh. And once you take action, then you could realize your goal. So our little person here has their diploma and they started off wishing that they could have had that diploma with their educational cap on and a little tass tassel on it. 
And so this is our way of encouraging our, um, our mentoring program and mentoring persons to realize their goals. Terrific. Absolutely. And so, because this is your first iteration, right? This is your first draft of what yes. you're doing. If you were to take it to the next level, because I want everyone to think about that, I do the same thing, is you might use some of those nice arrows that you learned before to show how yeah. things go from one stage to the next. You might use numbers. You might have a sequence that goes out you know, over time, like we were just talking about. That's a great start. Thank you so much for thank sharing. You, thank you. Of course. So I want to share with you, I'm going to put it in the chat right now. It's a link that you can either click or copy and paste. And I'm going to show you if I, if I may, yep, I can, um, a Padlet that I created. So while you might need to make an account, it does not cost anything. Um, but what I did was I created this online space where you can share your drawings. And so if you take a photo, you can get Padlet on your phone. You can also do it on your computer as you're seeing me do it now. Just get a picture that you can access and then you can add your work. So I put up our agenda and our first check-in question and you don't have to do this now. As long as you have the link, you can find it um, or you can always get in touch with me. But it's always interesting to see what people have done and to, uh, to learn from other people. So I'm hoping that's of interest to you. So this is, I think, a really cool device for sharing. It's a little less complex than a, a Miro board or mural or any of those things. So you have the link for that. And of course, you can always be back in touch. And so I'm also just going to note my website where I have pages that describe the kind of work that I do with lots of examples from work. So that might be helpful. Uh, for you to take a look at. So jillgreenbaum.com is my website. There are plenty of pages there to look at. As you can imagine, my, my email is jill at jillgreenbaum. And also I am happy to, if you are interested, uh, either send me an email or give me your email in the chat. I'm always putting together new classes and some of them are in person if you're in the US or wanna travel to New York City, um, but many of them are also online. And so I am happy to pull together perhaps people from this group, group that would like a training. Um, you just let me know what you're interested in and we'll see what we can do. Excellent, thanks, Manoj. Terrific. And so what I wanna do, I know we only have four minutes left. I wanna respect everyone's time. I'm wondering, here's my question and you know it's gonna be a visual. <laughs> What are you taking with you? Oh. Right? So this is also something you could use at the end of a session, at the end of a meeting. What are you taking with you today? And if you would either come off of mute and share or drop it in the chat, that would be great. I know I'm taking away the joy of having spent some time with all of you and sharing my passion. I think I'm taking... Uh... Uh, an idea how to imprint my thoughts on paper and show it to everybody around. That's that, gonna be really helpful. <laughs> Amazing and wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, for me, I think it's just start sketching small ideas. <laughs> Absolutely. Just begin and just keep doing it, knowing that it is always a growth process for everyone doing this work. Yes. Thank you. Sure thing, thank you. Hi, Jill. Hi. So yeah, I mean, I have been doing drawing from my childhood, but um, it's surprising that it, it it makes me so scared. Like if you give me a sentence and, you know, I have to put it into figures and make it more senseful. Um, I've been into drawing a lot, but then this idea is so scary. And I think I did that. Uh, it doesn't make much sense, but I, I still would like to show Please do. Um, what I did. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make much sense, but I tried something. Uh, I scratched my head and uh, what I'm taking away from this workshop is, okay, this is just the beginning. <laughs> Absolutely. Well done. Good for you, right? The first step can be the Thank hardest you. one. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So much.
Yes, thank you so much, Jill. Uh, I think what I've taken away is to overcome the fear and really ideate more. I think expressing my myself via drawings is, is really calming for me. Yeah. Mm. So oh, thank how you. wonderful. That's yes, terrific. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, Jill. So, okay. so, such a really engaging session. I, I, I loved every bit of it. And I'm sure it's the same for everyone that has joined. Please join me in giving Jill a resounding round of applause <laughs> and send her some love, please. Send her some love. Yes, great job. Much. I've shared your links on uh, the Women Power Up Network uh, chat groups. I will do do same on uh, other social media platforms as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, Cecilia, over to you. Hi, Cecilia. Okay, Cecilia was to present the certificate as our token of appreciation for coming on and really opening us up and uh, digging out those wells of creativity that have been lying dormant Hi. in us. Thank you so much, Jill. Okay, Cecilia, please present this to, yes. to Jill. Yes, thank, you. thank you. I'm sorry, I was mute I, and I couldn't find the, the, uh, the, the icon. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you very much, Jill. It was awesome. I love this session. Uh, I could draw something, so I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and please accept this token of appreciation from Women Power Up Network. And I, I'm really, really, I, I really appreciate this session. Thank you very much. It was my complete Thank pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for your time. <laughs> and of course, I will go on drawing, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you take care yeah thank you and okay. for our next session we will have uh, the first colombian uh, woman in space she is Giovanna stefania ramirez ruiz she is from colombia and she is uh, at nasa she's the first colombian astronaut and the first latin america who have women who have participated in the 32 simulated missions to mars so remember and schedule it is uh, may 6 uh, i hope all you will be here with us yeah thank you so much thank you so much celia thank you so much for joining us we would love you to just um, probably comments on social media. The, uh, the 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 code is actually expired. We really thank you for joining us. Thank you. Would love your feedback, uh, whether on our social media platforms or to any of the leads here, Cecilia, myself, um, Andrea, and uh, anyone else you can reach out to. Thank you so much for joining this session. We hope to see you in our next events, which will be on the sixth. As Cecilia has said, uh, the links. Uh, the promotions will start from next week, we hope. Thank you so much. Uh, at this point, we'll be wrapping up. We're sorry for taking a little bit more of your time. I hope you find it in your heart to forgive us. Thank you so much, Jill. Thank you, everyone. See you. Uh, let's take a let's let's take a photo. Okay. <laughs> okay. Please, all smiles. Thank you. <laughs> smile, camera, please. Hold your camera. Yes. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank, you. Thank you, Shield. Thank you, Shield. Thank, Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure. Bye. Bye.